So WWDC has come and gone. Steve Jobs spoke, he left the building, and with him came iOS 5, iCloud, and much more. What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and iOS 5 is in the house. I have the beta version pre-installed on my iPhone 4 here that I'm using as a test device. So we're going to walk through, do a quick walkthrough of some of the, uh, the more important features that iOS 5 has. We won't spend too much time on the other stuff. We'll spend time on things like the notification system, the music icons, and more to see really what's changed in this beta as opposed to iOS 4. Let's jump into it, but first special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're not hooking us up with iOS 5, obviously, but they've hooked us up with a bunch of phones. If you saw my tweet today, you know they hooked us up with phones we're using our one paw bandit game when you go into best buy mobile you walk out working they'll help you set up your email your web they can't help you set up ios 5 yet since it's not out but they will when it comes in the fall enough of that let's check it out ios 5 walkthrough let's take a look at it here we go ios 5 in the house i downloaded this yesterday morning and overall i've been pretty impressed with the improvements in 5 versus ios 4. now obviously i can't recommend this just yet this is a beta build or a developer's build of iOS 5, so there still are some bugs. Mostly when making phone calls, it freezes up. It freezes up when using Bluetooth, and I've noticed that quite a few of my apps don't work or they're a little wonky from time to time. So I can't recommend it just yet, but there are a lot of improvements I'm really excited about and really excited to see on retail devices when iOS 5 comes in the fall. So, you know, some huge improvements, and they've really listened to their users. They've listened to things not only that uh, existing iOS users were interested in, but they've listened to people that, you know, wanted to switch to the platform, and they kind of said, well, hey, I'm not going to switch until I see better notifications, for example, or uh, better camera controls, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They've listened, they've taken things from BlackBerry, Mess or from BlackBerry, from WebOS, from Android, and more, and kind of tweaked them, made them a little better, and made them a little prettier and thrown them into iOS 5. So let's get started. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on uh, the minor things. I really wanna show you some of the things that are gonna impact you on a day-to-day -day basis when you see iOS 5 in the fall. Things like the notifications menu, the new notification system as a whole, and some of the other changes that I think you'll notice right out of the gate. So let's take a look here, for example, at uh, the notifications. And first thing you'll see, we'll scroll down here, and you can see that just like Android, or very similar to the Android OS, there's a notifications bar now. So you don't see it at first, you have to pull down. There's no little thing to let you know that there's a notifications bar even up there. You just have to know and pull down. So obviously out of the box comes with weather and comes with a stock ticker. You can turn one of those off, you can turn both of them off if you want the weather but not the stock ticker, etc. You can keep those turned off. Now you can load them one of two ways. You can load these manually, your notifications manually, or you can load them by date. If you load them by date, they'll appear below which was what I prefer, so when I get a message or an email or a phone call, that'll all appear below. Or if I do them manually, it'll appear above and then it'll push the widgets down to the very bottom. So huge notification improvements. I'm gonna send a text message from a demo device just so you can see what it looks like. So you can see, let's say we're scrolling through here, taking a look, these are the new notifications that you'll notice. We'll load it right up, turn it on so you can hear. Bam, pops up just like that in the corner now. So no more big blue bar that pops across and interrupts you. I can still scroll around and do whatever I'm doing and see how I just popped right back into the display, so to speak. Now I can pull this down and it's gonna bring up the demo phone number or my contact, depending on who it is. And it groups these by uh, notification. So you can group by messages, by email, by Twitter, by missed phone calls, voicemail, etc. And then if you wanna remove those individually, you can click that and you can click clear and remove that. So if I had phone calls and emails coming in, they would appear separately down here in their own little header, if you will. You can see where messages is a separate header. There's a separate email header, phone call header, etc. So you know we can jump back and I want to show you. We'll go into this and we'll say hi and we'll respond back. I'm gonna go over here to the demo and then you can hear the demo obviously popping up. Now here's what it looks like from the lock screen because the lock screen has changed as well. Again, very subtle on the notifications front. Tremendous improvement. My biggest pet peeve with iOS was the way the notifications displayed. It was just archaic and awful. And now you can see that's how they pop up. And when you get an email or a phone call or more, you can, they'll start scrolling down, 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 down. And when they go below the slide to reply or the, the little lock thing, you can scroll up and down from within the lock screen. And then of course, if you want to respond to this message, see that blinking text icon, you can click it, slide it over where it says slide to reply and go right in to the message. So big improvements on the notification front. I can't get over how easy it is to use or how much better and improved the notifications are just across the board. So again, I just show you this one more time. I sent another text message 
So I'll be scrolling through here, and you can see it'll pop right up at the top. So just fantastically easy, and then if I wanted to click on that, I can click and go directly into the message. But very clean, very fluid. You notice a lot of little differences. The music icon has changed, for example. And let's go into settings so you can take a look, come out of those, and you can see a little bit of a difference here. These are more rounded, you'll notice. The little uh, toggles are more rounded. You'll see things like personal hotspot, notifications, and here is your menu for notifications. I have it sorted, like I said, by time, so they all appear below the widgets. But I can go down through here and let's say, you know, I have a cal I have calendar widgets, I have reminder widget, or reminders in the uh, notifications bar, phone reminders in the notifications bar. So let's say, uh, let's go into, uh, let's see, messages, for example. We'll go into badges here. I can bring up five recent messages, one recent message. So let's say I get 10 text messages because I'm just that important and that loved. It'll only show the recent five right now. And I can increase that if I want to, to 10. I can or down, down or <laughs> decrease it, excuse me, can't talk today, to uh, one. Downcrease it, really? Or uh, I can go over here and take a look at the alert style. And I have the banner selected, which are the ones that pop up over here in the corner. I can either select none, so I don't have to deal with uh, any notifications, or I can click the alerts, and that brings them up in the typical old iOS style that you remember, the typical massive blue, ugly, I'm a little biased, as you can tell, but <laughs> right there in the middle. So you have the banners, and uh, go at the top, as you see, banners appear at the top of the screen and go away automatically. I have it on the banners. I can either add or remove it from the notification center, and I can remove it from the lock screen. So let's say I don't want mail or anything from mail, emails, etc., to appear on the lock screen. I can kill that part off to where it shows up here when I get an email, but in the lock screen, it doesn't show up. So just a lot more customization in iOS 5. You can really customize how you want your notifications to be displayed and more. So that's a big, big perk. And then you can see iCloud, the implementation of iCloud in here as well. And I can't click on that because this is uh, my personal iPhone or one of my seven personal devices. So it does uh, show my personal stuff, but you'll see iCloud, Twitter pre-installed as well. So we can go to Twitter and you can see phone dog underscore Aaron on there. And it, you may have seen a, a tweet from me this morning about the Best Buy devices. I took that picture on this device, and actually we'll go back and take a look at that. So you see, I'm gonna load up the camera, and we'll go over here to this picture of the city of Charlotte. So let's see, I happen to be, I had to pick up the Best Buy phones, had to turn around and stopped and took this picture actually for this video. So we'll click here, and this is a big one. You can see Twitter is now integrated in along with MMS assigned to contact. So you remember Twitter in the past, you had to take the picture, you had to go out of the camera, you had to go over to the Twitter application, you had to upload the picture, and Twitter, one step less now, you hit tweet, and this is where you see iOS 5 really laggy and really stuttery. This, you can clearly tell it's a uh, developer version. Um, hello, world. So you can see some lag there. And uh, this is stuff I hope they improve before they send it out. But you can see a, a clipping of the picture, how much text I have left. I can add my location if I wanted to, and then I can hit send. It's going to hit me with an audible notification when it posts. should hit me with a notification. Yeah, I have, there you go, there it was. And so it's posted now and I can go into Twitter and bring it up and you can see, I'll scroll up, 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 ba-bam, hello world, Twitter picture right there on the page. So it's much better when you have a picture, you can go right there, you can tweet it right away and it brings up this clean interface as opposed to going into the application, uploading, and more, big benefit there. So let's scroll through and see uh, some of the other changes. Obviously, newsstand is a change, but when you click on it, you'll see you can download magazines and newspapers in the App Store, but the store, lo the store link is disabled. Newsstand, to my knowledge, isn't available in the App Store just yet. Now, you know, I mean, obviously apps are there, but the uh, ability to do magazines and newspapers isn't. So let's go up the App Store, and if you wonder why I keep pulling it out, I'm just making sure that there's no personal information, because that wouldn't be cool. So let me pull out of the purchase so you can see and just go to updates. That's what it's gonna look like. It'll say all apps are up to date, but you see this purchased link, which appears in the App Store now, and you can see all of the applications that I've ever downloaded that are not on this iPhone. Now, if I wanted to download Sky Team, for example, which isn't on this iPhone, I click the cloud button, I verify my password, and it downloads it right away. So it's nice to see this whole iCloud implementation. I haven't tested the iTunes stuff because it's not available just yet, but you can really see it with contacts, with all your personal information, and then things like this, where it brings up every app I've ever downloaded, and I can just go down the list and go bam, 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 install. Now, one thing I don't like 
is much like when you install uh, applications, new applications, every time you install something, it cancels you out of the app store and brings it over to, you know, or starts installing. So every time, if I wanted to install all three of these, for example, I had to click this, put in the password, it would go away or cancel out app store and start installing. Then I have to go back to app store, do the second one, go back to app store, do the third. So I wish there was a way you could just click, 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 and then download all at once as opposed to uh, having to go back into the app store 10 million times and do it over and over again. So that's a quick run through of iOS 5. Those are the real major changes that we're seeing in this latest build. Notifications, app store improvements, newsstand, and then little things like the music icon, things like the widget or the way the uh, toggles look in here and some new additions to the settings menu. So keep it locked on phonedog.com for continuing coverage on iOS 5, all of the developer versions, and any of the improvements that come in between the various software builds. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away iPad, smartphones, a ton of goodies, and more, a ton of goodies and more for using our One Paw Bandit. That's not right, not One Paw Bandit. Colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. We give away stuff in a lot of contests, so it's easy to get confused. But uh, iPad 2s, smartphones, and more. So head over to facebook.com slash phone dog, check that out, and be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron and on my personal Facebook page at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Later.